Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to create an entire world, an entire new RPG setting on the fly. Now, the situation which kind of prompted me to do this video is kind of a funny situation. I have a few players which wanted to play a game with me but really didn't know what they wanted to do and I had a world set up for them but they had something different in mind. So they decided we were going to do more of a sci-fi setting and I have never really built a sci-fi setting before. So this was kind of a surprise to me but you have to listen to your players. You want to make their time as enjoyable as possible. So I am creating a sci-fi setting within a two week deadline and I have to hurry or I'm not going to be able to do this. Now, World Anvil is a great resource for things like this. It lets you just cover so much information in so little time. It's organized, it has a lot of structure. Anyway, I'm going to stop selling out on World Anvil and we're going to create our new world. Welcome to D20 in Disguise. Okay, I'm back and we're going to create our new world, so let's go ahead and create a new world. And we're just going to come up with some sort of filler name. So what could be a good filler name? Okay, I think I have an idea. I'm going to name this world the Cosmic Labyrinth. I know, a little cliche, but it's going to have to work for now. You just have to keep moving to do something like this. Create an entire world within a two-week deadline. Okay, let's add a little prose, a little description to this world. The Cosmic Labyrinth is a maze of is a maze of asteroid belts, black holes, nebulas, and other dangerous space obstacles. Very little of the world is inhabited and the frontier is nearly everywhere okay that makes the world slightly unique though it's still your classic space setting. You have to add at least one thing to make it stand out from everything else. So, let's think about what could make this world stand out. Ooh, ooh, I have, okay. What if the very fabric of time in this world was slightly off kilter, broken, so that there were time paradoxes everywhere? Let's add that. The temporal, temporal nature of the world is very unstable. Timelines shifting without warning. People being in time loops. Across the galaxy. Certain technological 
advances have been made to prevent these temporal anomalies from occurring on space stations, starships, and the occasional pricey cruiser. But once one steps outside the boundary, of civilization, these paradoxes are an every day occurrence. Okay, so we made something unique about the world. There's a lot of temporal anomalies in the cosmic labyrinth, and you can't really trust anything outside beyond the boundaries of space. And I am going to be playing this in D&D 5e, so it's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to have to make a lot, a lot of technical changes to the game. I'm going to have to make item tables, price tables, all of that, but... We're not going to cover that in this video. We're simply covering how to create the world, how to populate it, how to start off with your first planet, with your first few settlements, and how to get the ball rolling. Okay, now that we have created our world, we're going to start with our first settlement or area. Now, in a fantasy setting, this would probably be your first town or your first town in the surrounding area. But in the sci-fi setting I'm doing, I'm going to be creating the first world the few settlements which are on that world, as I'm thinking it's going to be on the frontier of civilization, and just the resources and areas on that planet. So, let's start by creating a world with the geography template. Okay, so my first world I've decided is going to be named Givron 3, as it's going to be the third planet in a system. So, you're going to name it Givron 3. Turn down to the pros. Givron 3 is on the border of the frontier. It is a small mining world mostly favored for its rich stock now we have to create a mineral name which will be Kylos rich stock of Kylos After we're done writing everything for Givron 3, then we'll move on to making an article for Kylos, which I do have an idea for it, but I'll tell you about that when we come to it. There are three main settlements on Givron 3. And now we have to create our settlements on the world, so that adds a little bit more depth. It's not just empty. Okay, the three main settlements will be Azrin, Kerpos, and uh, Rader. These three settlements are 
computing to be the largest producer of kites, which will sell for nearly five thousand Imperials, which will be the main currency of the world. Now, I'm thinking for the currency, there'll be a main currency, and then there'll be a lot of backwater currencies, which don't get used near as much, but they will still be used. So, we're going to focus on Imperials, but just for your information, there are going to be other currencies in the future. Aquila. The conditions on the planet very inhospitable. Now we're going to have to decide a name for the temporal fluctuating. So, due to its level what if we were to call it some sort of radiation so like Verna's radiation or Verna radiation let's call it Verda radiation or Verda it's high level of Verdin radiation the settlements are very cheap as well so they can barely take the strain of all the temporal fluxation. So, I think that's enough description for our first world, so I'm going to run through the rest of the details for this world, and I'll meet you back then. Alrighty, we're going to cut it off there, and we will conclude in part two of this video, coming out in two weeks. Thank you all for watching, keep on creating, and I will see you in the next video. We have told